Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. How do these things work? Well, there are two sites of action, and they work by depleting energy in cells, whether it's an insect or a cancer cell or a worm. And they do that by inhibiting the mitochondria. The mitochondria are little football-shaped things inside of cells. They've got lots of membranes, and these membranes contain complexes one through five of the electron transport system. And the end result of these complexes working on breaking down your glucose metabolism is to convert it to uh, water and carbon dioxide through Krebs cycle and then make ATP. That's adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is a triphosphate. It's got three phosphates on it and it's a highly energetic compound. So you can carry out reactions in your cells at body temperature. Whereas normally in a chemical lab you'd have to heat them to make it work, okay? So they're cofactors. So ATP is the energy compound of cells. So we inhibit the mitochondria, and we know where, where we inhibit. It's inhibited in complex one of the five complexes. And Dr. John Casita at Berkeley has taken our material and tested it in subfractions of those mitochondrial complexes and found that it inhibits the PSST protein subunit of complex one. That was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That's the most prestigious journal in the United States, okay? So I know right where it works there. But also it works down in the plasma membrane down at the bottom by inhibiting an enzyme there called the NADH oxidase. And that prevents the cancer cells from growing anaerobically without air, without oxygen. So we knock out the cancer cells energy production in two ways, anaerobically and aerobically, okay? Next slide. Now, this ATP compound uh, is also a precursor compound of other nucleotides, they're called. And these are UTP, CTP, and GTP. And also, they're the deoxy sugars, which have deoxyribose instead of ribosome. These compounds make up RNA. The deoxy ones make up DNA, which is in chromosomes, okay? And all of these are in three days in leukemic cells, you can see, are depleted. Like only 24% of the usual concentration of UTP is there if they're treated with pawpaw. Okay, these compounds are the building blocks of new cells for the new chromosomes and the new ribosomes. Okay, so these compounds then, when they're inhibited, prevent new cells from forming. And furthermore, and this is almost serendipitous, we saw that an ointment made up of pawpaw prevents cold sores. And you can get rid of cold sores in two days with this stuff. Why? Because cold sores are a virus. And viruses are made up of these nucleotides. And by depleting the nucleotides, we have antiviral effects. And the world needs antiviral compounds right now. AIDS is a virus. SARS is a virus. Okay? The common cold is a virus. So this pawpaw stuff is being used for shingles right now, which is another herpes virus, herpes zoster. Not only in an ointment form, but they're taking the capsules. And a doctor called me last Friday night and found me, you know, <laughs> and I was still in Utah then, and she says, you gave me some of this jar, of this little ointment, and she said, you told me to tell, me the, tell you the results, and I'm telling you it worked. I gave it to a guy with shingles. She said, orally and with the jar of ointment topically, she said, the shingles were gone in nine days. And look how long people suffer with shingles. You know? So we've got something here, okay? The next slide. Now, here's another little angle. When, when you treat with chemotherapy, after a while it doesn't work anymore. 
You get breast cancer and it's spread to the lymph nodes. It's going to go to the bone marrow from the lymph nodes. You take the chemo, you go through all the stuff, you lose your hair, you get sick, throw up and all this kind of stuff and in five years you die. That's the usual pattern with chemo. Why? Chemo doesn't work anymore because the cells have become resistant to the chemo. And this little cartoon shows us why. There's a little pore that develops in the cell membrane of the cancer cell. It's a hole. And it's called the P170 glycoprotein. And this pore grabs onto the adromycin that's inside the cell and goes and spits it out. And the next one, and it spits it out, okay? So it's a pump. It's an efflux pump, and it pumps the drugs out of the cancer cell so the cancer cell is no longer killed by the drug. And pretty soon all the cancer cells have got this pump, and you can't kill any of them anymore. And so it's called the multi-drug resistant pump because no drugs work. The pawpaw, fortunately, isn't pumped by the pump. I can explain to you chemically why that happens. But PAWPAW -paw goes in and inhibits ATP. And look at here in the middle of that structure, there are two sites that bind ATP. And ATP gives us the energy to drive the pump. So by inhibiting the ATP production, we thwart the pump mechanism. And just recently, it's been demonstrated in China, at least the Chinese are believing in what I published, the, they demonstrated that inside of the cancer cell, with the presence of the pawpaw compounds, drugs will now accumulate. Whereas before, with drug resistance, they wouldn't. And this means that we can restore the susceptibility of the cancer to the chemotherapeutic agent if you want to go through all that business. Okay, so I think it should be an important adjuvant to chemotherapy to help prevent the pump development and to treat cells that have already got the pump. Okay. So we treat resistant tumors with this business. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website, www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name, McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.